Section 2 emphasizes more on the creation of enterprise applications using the web profile of Jakarta EE. Let us now start our Section 2 by implementing a simple but effective create, read, update, and delete data transaction using only the light version of EJB 3.2. We all know that an EJB or Enterprise Java Bean is a class that uses one or more annotations from our EJB specification. Also, this kind of class can only be executed using an EJB container supported by our application server. Now, we use this EJB to wrap a simple logic or a huge business process to be shared remotely to other EAR or WAR deployed application or to other components within the application itself. Before we start our recipe, it is recommended to create a separate Maven project for us not to mess up our previous implementation. That's why I have here my section 2 EJB project with the required CDI bin descriptor file and with the following Maven dependencies for my Jakarta EE components, for my CDI bin injection, and for my JSTL views. Also, I will be using a different context route for my project, which will be this. Now, our main goal here is to implement a simple form handling transaction for a product inventory system. But it's not that we'll be pulling off the whole EJB 3.2 architecture here because only EJB core components will be utilized, such as session beans, interceptors, remote interfaces, and data persistency if there's any. Let's start our recipe by having a form view here which will accept our product ID, product name, and product price. Also, this view page uses some CSS and bootstrap resources for its simple structural layout. This view page will be rendered by a servlet I call product form controller, which will also server push all the resources to the browser cache. After clicking Submit, this form page will redirect us to a result view page here, which will output all of the product records from a certain data store. And this data store will be dispatched by a servlet I call product result view, which will execute all the inventory transactions. Now, the next step will be very essential since we will be implementing our inventory crude transaction in such a way that it can be accessed remotely using an EJB session bean. The supported EJB has three types of session beans, but the most appropriate one to use for our crude transaction is the stateless session bean. To create a stateless session bean, it is mandatory first to have our remote interface, which consists all of our crude methods to be implemented. And this interface must have a remote annotation on top which indicates that all of its bin implementation classes can be invoked outside of the context root, maybe from the other application server or virtual machine. And this access can be done through a certain resource lookup mechanism. So here now is one implementation class of our remote interface. This is now a stateless session bin, since this is registered using the stateless annotation. I assign a unique bin name which can be used to access this bean through a remote URL later. So here is our temporary data store of product records instantiated using the session bean's callback post construct method and garbage collected before the session bean is removed from the container. And below here are the implemented inventory transactions. And for a lookup operation, since I will not be using any third-party application, I will be accessing my stateless session bin inside this product result view servlet, which needs all of this crude transaction to pursue its simple inventory processing. So now this servlet, which is now a client, must declare our stateless session bin using its base class type. And for this client to obtain a reference to our stateless session bin, a JNDI lookup is required. Thus, I have here an initial context object that will ask for the JNDA address of our injected session bean in order to look up and extract the said bean object. In my case, the JNDA address is prefixed with a Java colon app namespace, which indicates that the remote processing will be occurring in the same application context. And this namespace will be followed by the context root name and then by the unique bean name. 
of our stateless session bean. After a successful remote access, we can now execute our add product method, which can save the newly created product record and also list product needed by our resolve view. Let us now compile and deploy this Maven project and start running our app to build our inventory. Let us now check our console log. We can see here that there is only one stateless session bin instance that have been utilized all throughout the application context. Why is this so? This is because that our stateless session bin container can only assign one instance out of its pool of instances to an application. And this instance does not have any associated client state. And before it reaches its expiry age, this instance can process independent operations one at a time and can preserve instance data just like what it did to our data store. We can further manage these instances by configuring some default settings of our stateless session bin container, just like what I did here with my stateless container. I adjusted my access timeout to 40 seconds from 30, which is the waiting time for an instance to be available again for use. Also, I changed the max age of each to 2 minutes from 0 hour, and the close time here to 6 minutes from 5, which is the waiting time for an instance to be destroyed during shutting down of container pool. You can still adjust some properties here, but be careful with some unwanted results. What if I use a stateful session bin instead? I have here a, another implementation class of the same context as my stateless, but registered as a stateful session bin with a different bin name. I will be using this one instead of the previous stateless to access my crude transaction. Let's see what will happen. Running my application with the stateful, this is what will happen. Why this behavior? If we look at the console log here, each of our form transaction uses a different stateful session bin instance, which means that the container of our stateful session bin assigns different instances to different client requests, and each of which maintains its own client state. And also reflected from this log are three passivating operations, which we didn't find in our stateless session bin. This is because that our stateful session bin has an additional state called the idle time state. This is when that the session bin is being passivated or serialized to the file system for an idle time and then being reactivated or deserialized once it is used again. And to manage those idle state events, it has two additional callback methods, the post-activate and the pre-passivate here. We can also configure our stateful session bin container just like what I did to my stateful container here, I changed my access timeout to 10 seconds from 30, which is the waiting time for a stateful instance to be available again for use before it is removed from the container. Also, I set my capacity to one instance to enable my passivate and activate callbacks. And lastly, I set my frequency to 20 from 60 seconds which will increase the number of times the container will check for an idle instance from its bin cache. For the sake of this recipe, I have managed to create a single tone session bin, which can only be accessed within this application. So no remote interface needed here. Besides, this will be doing some trivial tasks like printing all the product records to the console log. Since there will be one fixed instance assigned to this single tone bin, it is appropriate to instantiate this bin object once the application started. We do that by applying the startup annotation here. To locally access the singleton bin object, we do not perform any JNDI lookup, but auto-wiring them to a component, let's say in this servlet, through using the EJB annotation. The default bin name is used in this case. Now to extend more functionality to our session bin, we use some injectable classes since all of these session bins support CDI 2.0 specification. 
In this recipe, I have created a product analytics, which is a request code bin. What this does is to compute and expose the average price of all the products in the data store. What I did to this bin object, I inject this to my stateless session bin here using constructor injection for it to access the data store. And then we directly render the computed value to our result view page. Likewise, I have here a session scope bin, which generates the transaction date and also rendered by our result view page.